Hello and welcome back to uh, another episode of OSA TV. And today we're going to be another uh, installment of our section, What is a Fish? So here at OSA, we're trying to dissect what exactly is a fish, because when you can walk into our fish store, it's kind of dazzling and dizzying to see all the different critters, all the different types of fish. We're trying to, you know, section them off into categories just so people can make the most informed decisions they can and therefore have the most success. And everyone's having the most fun when they're having success. So today, we're going to be talking about one of the most important freshwater fish families, and those are the cyprinids. Now, the cyprinids are textbook known. If you type it in, you're gonna see goldfish, koi, and carp. And that's a huge segment of the cyprinids. What people don't realize is that there's tons of other fish that are common to the pet trade that are also cyprinids. Everything that's a resbora, a barb, freshwater sharks, all these things are cyprinids. So today we're gonna to be talking about this hugely important freshwater fish family. What are some of its features? Like what actually makes a cyprinid a cyprinid? And then uh, what are some things we can do to have more or less success with them in the hobby? So first off, we're gonna be uh, looking at something that you might not consider to be a carp relative. So over here, we'll see if we can get them in frame, but these are the, the filament barbs. If you walk into our, uh, our front section of the shop here. Now these filament barbs, um, are from India because cyprinids kind of radiate from the Eurasian uh, continent. You know, they don't really look like a barb, but we'll talk about um, all the different characteristics that make a cyprinid a cyprinid. So, what makes a cyprinid a cyprinid? Cyprinids have barbels. So, you'll see the characteristic little barbels that come off the koi and every other shark and barb, and some of these can be a little bit smaller, like in these filamentous barbs, and some of them can be a lot more pronounced. All uh, cyprinids have these barbels that they use to scan and smell the bottom, and they also have this downward facing mouth that they use to pick up feed items. Now, all cyprinids are also united in how their guts work. So no cyprinids have a true stomach. They, uh, they have no true cardiac stomach. They're basically like a cow, where they're a consortium of all these different microbes that they house in this very long intestinal tract, and they're used to grazing on all this stuff, detritus, bottom matter, and they're used to taking in all this constant assembly line of low quality uh, prey items, and then having the, the bacteria in their guts process it. So all cyprinids, are designed to be kind of bottom feeders by design. Not only with that bottom facing mouth, the barbels just sense out and taste good stuff. And then this long intestinal tract filled with this bacteria that converts all this inferior prey items uh, and forage items into great nutrition that can make fantastic colors and everything that we see in an ornamental barb. So besides being bottom feeders, the cyprinids have two major other superpowers. Uh, the first is that they're able to gulp air uh, to fill their swim bladder, and that's very characteristic of them. They're able to rise to the top. You'll often see koi and goldfish doing this, where they'll gulp a bunch of air, and that's how they can regulate their buoyancy. And the second thing that they have is that the cyprinids are actually some of the best uh, hearing fish ever. So they have this thing called the Weberian organ, which essentially takes all the air in their gas bladder and translates it into information into their brain. So believe it or not, uh, it's actually very difficult to sneak up on a carp in the wild because they have very good hearing. Um, and that's another thing to consider uh, when you have them in the tank is that they can be uh, a little bit um, skittish and disturbed by loud noises. The barbs, the resbores, the sharks, koi, goldfish, these are all extremely robust aquarium fish that really do, do quite well in most setups. They don't require very specific water, as long as they receive a good food supply and relatively low nitrogenous waste levels, most of these species are highly robust and even highly adaptable. The biggest issue that many people have with these species is that a lot of them get way too big to house in normal aquariums. So that's something to be considered. Um, because we don't live in Florida or another tropical area, it's very difficult to translate. Even ecologically, uh, you shouldn't move any of wild cyprinids uh, into uh, outside ponds. Um, but around here, you know, if you have koi or goldfish, uh, these are species of cyprinids that can be moved into ponds. So one of the most important cyprinids of all time are the danios. So everyone loves danios, you know, as they're a very easy aquarium fish, they're very cheap. I myself love giant danios because they're a really cheap, awesome, charismatic shoaling fish uh, that's very tolerant to a lot of conditions. But these guys, the zebra, Danio. 
These guys are so important to human health because these guys are one of the first organisms that had their first entire genome mapped. And because of that, there are, were, and continue to be one of the most important model organisms for biomedical research. So these guys are, are really excellent model organisms and studying their embryos and their genetic faculties has allowed huge advancements in human health. Like rearing them in colonies is one of the best gigs that an early aquaculturist has out of school. Uh, because every medical research facility, even, including Boston Medical, uh, just north of here, has to keep colonies of these guys that are rigorously uh, controlled and selected uh, so that they'll have a constant pool of um, specimens for their studies. So fun fact about cyprinids, uh, helping out with human health as well as aquariums. Cyprinids as a whole, very good at hearing, excellent bottom feeders, uh, extremely diverse, um, really, really tolerant. The only uh, fault that they have is sometimes they get a little too big for our tanks.